Boys, 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 boys. This isn't going to be like some of my other videos. This isn't going to be like some of the ones where it's a bit more edited. There's a bit more jumping. There's a bit more higher pace. There's a bit more tempo. There's a bit more energy. Because to be honest, I don't think it's uh, something that deserves that kind of thing. I think it's a different kind of video that we need to sit down, me and you, and we need to have a conversation. We need to talk. We need to talk about Leeds. We need to talk about Fulham. We need to talk about Jesse Marsh. We need to talk about a hell of a lot of things. A hell of a lot of things. First thing on the agenda, should Jesse Marsh stay? Should Jesse Marsh go? Now, I've seen a lot of people to and fro, and I've seen all over Twitter, all over people in the chat, get him gone. Get Big Fat Sam in. Get Sean Dyche in. Get Nuno in. Get Parker in. Look. I'm 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 as big a Jesse Marsh fan as anyone. You know. We've been here week in, week out. And I've been dying on the hill for Jesse Marsh. I've been backing him through everything. I back these players, a lot of these players, through everything. You know me. I'm not one to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I'm not one to rush to assumptions. I'm not one to rush to call for someone's head. But the simple facts are the results have not been good enough. The results have not been good enough. We are sitting languishing, languishing in the relegation battle. We are worse off than we were last season. We started off with such high expectations. We go from cruising up the league. We're chilling up there. We're beating Chelsea 3 now. Everything's looking good. Two months later, we're losing 3-2 at home to Fulham. Fulham. And I don't want to hear this whole rubbish, he say, she say, Fulham are sixth in the league. Rubbish. It's Fulham. Fulham at home. If you're telling me there is ever a year, I don't care if they're in a goddamn title race. If you're telling me there's ever a time where Fulham should come to Ellen Road, and Leeds should not be the favourites to absolutely slap them. <laughs> then you, my friend, are living in a delusional fantasy land. We should have been absolutely cleaning house. Creaming those cheeks out. But unfortunately, we didn't. We turned up. We got outfought. Outgunned. Outresourced. Outtacticated. We got outdone in every single department today. Every single department. We had a good 25-minute spell at the beginning. Again. Didn't put our chances away. Again, didn't create enough chances. And again, stupid, stupid individual mistakes. But am I going to blame the mistakes? Am I going to blame that? Well, look, if we'd actually taken our chances, if we'd actually been more clinical in the final third, then guess what? We wouldn't have had to worry about that because we could have had a two to three goal cushion and should have had against the side that we were playing against. But no, we just lack any kind of identity. Any kind of identity at all. We have nothing. Our defence is pure gym settings. Pure gym settings. Open for business 24 hours a day. It's ridiculous, mate. We're just opening the doors. Here's the keys to the kingdom. Parting like Moses in the Red Sea. Walk yourself through. Have a good time, my friend. You know what? You're not going to score? How about we score for you? How about we even score for you? These past week... I was going to say these past seven days, this past week, past even longer than that. Even longer than that. It's just, it's been getting worse and worse and worse. And we've looked spineless, gutless, toothless. But most importantly, identityless. There is no identity. Tell me what you expect to see when you look at this Leeds United type. Are we the most high pressing team in the league? Do we play the most expansive, quick, tiki-taka football? Are we the strongest defensive team in the league? Are we the team that dictates the pace of the game really well? What is our style? What is our identity? Now, if you can answer me that, then answer me this. Does our identity work? Does our style work? Is it effective? It's been effective in two games, Chelsea and Arsenal, in which point I'll pose as devil's advocate. Is this a good time to get rid of Jesse Marsh? Because the only time his tactics seem to really be working is against these higher league oppositions. We've got Liverpool up next. Surely we should keep him till after then. Surely we should keep him till after then. Utilise his tactics that seem to work good against the big boys against the Liverpool side. 
Food for thought. Food for thought. But the apathy that I see around the club, around the ground, around everything, the defeated nature of a lot of Leeds fans, it's it's striking. It's striking. It's strong. It really is. And it's sad to see what was a club filled with optimism, passion and enthusiasm just get done over like this. And it really is a crime. It's a crime that the best football we've ever played in our life, well, my lifetime, depending on how old you are, but the best football we've played in decades, we didn't even get to see it because it was behind closed doors. We've really been shafted there. We've been sold up the golden path, sold up the garden path, and absolutely shafted. Um, It's just not good. It's not a good place. Now, who do I blame for that? At the end of the day, the book stops with the owners. The owners made the decision to appoint the manager. The owners made the decision on the players. And the owners are the ones that, whilst we thought had a great transfer window early on, you know, they made a lot of good moves. A lot of good moves. At the end, lost our two best players and didn't invest in the key areas. Now, everyone wants to throw Jesse Marsh under the bus. And don't get me wrong, we will get onto Jesse Marsh. But Jesse Marsh was very clear. He wanted a starting left back. And he wanted a f- he wanted a fit starting left back who was senior, not senior Furpo. And he wanted a fit starting striker. Again, a senior fit starting striker. We looked at Charles Ketelere and we looked at Cody Gakpo. Did we do enough to get them? No, we didn't. If we had assigned those two key positions and a centre half, could be a completely different story right now. Could be a completely different story. Or will it? Or do we literally have that lack of an identity, that much of a lack of an identity, that it wouldn't even make a difference? I think it would. I think it would have. And that's why I don't put every single thing onto Jesse Marsh. And the book stops at the owners, first of all, and the board. Second of all, go look at the players. Go look at the players. A lot of the goals we can see, a lot of the games we've given away, individual errors, man. Individual errors, stupid individual errors, stupid individual mistakes. And which is why if you looked a few weeks ago when we had this poor run before the past few games, everyone was saying, oh, you know, if you actually look at the performances and then you look at the results we got, it doesn't really justify it. Well, I'm afraid when you then go and lose to Palace and then go and lose to Arsenal and then go and lose to a depleted Leicester side and then go and lose to Fulham, those questions start mounting up and they start piling up and that's all happening in a very short space of time. And this is where I get to Jesse Marsh again. Decisions for me today, starting 11-wise, I can criticise him on. I did not like the move for Sam Greenwood. I don't think it was a, I don't think it was a good choice. I don't think it was working out at half-time. I think he should have changed it around. I think he should have given Klitsch more of an opportunity. Klitsch has been there for us. He's done it for us many times over. You may not 100% like him, but I think he would have done a better job than Sam Greenwood did. That's for sure. I think sometimes he's been a little bit too reactive. He has been a little bit too reactive. He hasn't really foreseen a lot of difficulties until they've come and smacked him in the face. And then he has decided to change things around. And finally, I just don't think he's got this team playing a cohesive brand of football. I said it. When we lost Bielsa, it was always going to be hard. When we lost, when we had Bielsa, we had a team that knew where everyone was going to be. They knew how to play the one-touch passing. They knew how to get each other into the right positions. But now we don't know that. We don't ever cut a team open with great tiki-taka football. It's either pressing them and picking the ball up right in their final third and doing something with it, or it's someone making a great individual run and cutting through three or four people. It's never some great one-touch football, ping, 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 through the legs, lovely bit of play. No, none of that. It's always relying on some sort of individual brilliance or some sort of mistake from the other team or some sort of physical overwhelming of the other team, none of which are really an attacking tactical brand of football. Now, do I think he should be sacked? No, I think I still back him. I look at the Arteta thing and I look at how long it took him to get Arsenal to where they are. 
And I do believe in that. I do still believe in my core philosophy of football, which is to give managers a lot of time. Now, what you would say is you'd hope that within a short period of time you've seen, you you see the the style, you see early signs of what could be built for the future. And the argument here is is that we're not really seeing that. And, well, who's saying the argument? I literally just gave you that argument about five minutes ago when I was talking about the brand of football or the identity. Um, and I don't think at times we have really got that. We've got glimpses of it. We've got glimpses of it. But we don't really. Um, but I wouldn't sack him unless if we can get anyone good. I wouldn't sack him because who are we going to bring in? We've got a relatively new bunch of players. You can't just expect that a, a new substandard manager is going to mag magically change things or putting Mark Jackson in charge is going to change things because it won't. It will just get worse. The only reason you sack him is if you can get a top manager in. If by some miracle, some absolute Christmas miracle, Pochettino is lurking around because, I mean, Villa were in for Pochettino, so why can't Leeds be? So if by some Christmas miracle he's around or... If by some random, random glitch in the matrix, Thomas Tuchel ends up coming around, then yeah, maybe you change it up. But I don't see any any efficacy in changing it right now. And I don't know, man. I, it hurts. It hurts because something has to change. Something has to change. And if it's not the manager, then what? Because I haven't seen fans like this for a long time. It's not even anger. It's not even sorrow. Apathy is the word to, to describe it. Just pure apathy. Just signing out. Loss of consciousness. Just letting it all happen in front of you. Through one ear, out the other. Through one eyeball, out your nostrils. Just streaming through and flowing through. And it's a sad time to be in. And we need to fix something up. I don't think it's over. I'm not here to sound all doom and gloom. But, you know, I thought it was something that I just wanted to sit down and talk for you. I recorded a different kind of video for the reaction. But I kind of scrapped it. And I thought, you know what? I just want to turn the camera on. I don't want any edits. I don't want any of that. I just want to turn the camera on with you. Speak to you. And have a conversation. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about all of this. I really am. I really want to know what you guys think about Jesse Marsh, what you guys think about Leeds, about the players, everything. It was nice to chat to some of you earlier. It's not as Jesse Marsh out as you necessarily all think, but the vast majority are. Um, but I really want to know what you guys have to say. I appreciate the support recently as well. If you could help support this, by let me know what you think down below. Maybe dropping a like if you enjoyed it. Or didn't enjoy Leeds' game. <laughs> and uh, if you could subscribe as well. You know, all of that would be greatly appreciated. But it's been nice to speak to you guys. I really want to know what you guys have to say. And hopefully we can only pray that we pull forward against Liverpool. Uh, but for now, it's been your boy JT. And I will see you very, very soon. Au revoir, my brothers and my sisters.